all right family it's tasha mom bear prepping welcome to the channel welcome back to the channel where we just talk about preparedness we really just talk about different things that me and my family do to give you and yours ideas um, for your preparedness journey now today what i want to say is um and or talk about is um some stuff that's not that glamorous right Pre prepping preparedness um having this lifestyle is not always like fun and games it's not always um glamorous it's not always like ooh, ooh, ooh you know gloom and doom and all this craziness um you know look at my whatever right Today, I want to talk about something that is very important for Grid Down. It's just an area that, to be honest, it's not 100% the first thing that I think about. We definitely are prepared in this area. But in when you talk about wants, needs, things that you absolutely have to have ap and absolutely want during Grid Down, um, lighting is not actually at the top of my list, okay? There's many, 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 many things that um, if I had to choose that I would want. But lighting is important goes to your psyche goes to your mental um but listen our folks back in the day you know essentially they had a room a cabin a a, a small space that was lit was lit up during the daytime with daytime light at nighttime you know the the curtains were drawn and they had the embers and the light from their um fireplaces right and um their fires and that's really what they got their a whole light from. And they may or may not have a lantern or two and a lantern or oil lantern um, that was used for the whole family though. And, and they used it to go to room to room if they needed to get something in the dark. If the outhouse was outside, maybe one of them would take a lantern to go out to go to the bathroom, right? And so, um, you know, it was very limited on what they had. Obviously today we have so many things on the market, so many different things that you can get. Um, and so we're gonna talk a little bit about those things and about the things um, kind of just that we have gotten that have worked for us, have worked for our family. Now, a long, long time ago, probably when I first had the channel, within probably the first six months, I did a video on blackout boxes. And basically it's a box, it's a tote that, uh, you know, you stage and you have ready for a blackout. And it basically essentially has, you know, flashlights, lanterns, extra batteries, um, you know, extra matches and lighters, some candles, um, just, uh, you know, a, an array of different, um, some glow sticks, just all of the different things for a blackout, right? That have to do with kind of um, being able to see in the dark, right? And so, you know, and I've done a video before on different types of lighting. This is kind of what that's going to be about, but there's different things that you want to make sure that you have in your preps. Now, although I did that video back then on that box, that blackout box, I'm still kind of a fan of having that, but more so having that as your over, you know, your extra um, box of stuff, right? It is good to have it all together, have it taken out of packages and kind of staged in that box, but I'm a big believer of having things staged around the house and ready to go. So in our house, for example, we have tons of flashlights, tons, tons, tons of flashlights, different sizes. I'm a fan of both, both two kinds. One is very small pocket, you know, type pack, packs a punch type that you would put on your keychain type you would have in your car or your purse, right? Um, something very small in a bag. That's just exactly what it's for to just give you light right away. It's good. It's high quality. And, um, I'm a fan of those. And then I'm a fan of heavy duty, bigger size, but I'm a fan of if it's bigger size, it can pack a punch as far as a weapon and it's got some girth to it, okay? This has some weight to it and that's the type that I uh, like to have, okay? I also like to have the type that have um, lens options like red lens. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but that's, I'm a fan of, of flashlights and I'm a fan of those being placed everything. Those aren't in the garage on in some kind of drawer or, you know, somewhere else, right? In the work shed, in a toolbox somewhere. No, these in our home are are staged all over. Every single room, there's a flashlight somewhere that somebody can get to. And we use them pretty often, actually, okay? Like, if we're doing stuff with the animals and stuff outside, taking that, somebody's taking a flashlight, right? Other thing that's staged is lanterns, small size lanterns. So this could be battery ran lanterns. This could be, there's all types of stuff on the market where it's just um, charged up right by USB, tons of stuff. So it doesn't matter if it's USB, doesn't matter if it's battery, 
obviously you have to think if it's USB, that means you have to have the ability to um, charge it. This could be in your car, this could be in the computer, this could be a solar generator or some other kind of generator, but keep that in mind, okay? If it's all the things that take batteries, you've got to keep the batteries. Um, be thinking rechargeable batteries now, going away from just regular batteries. Um, but again, you have to have a way to recharge those batteries, right? Plug into a solar generator, something, okay? Um, but there's a lot of stuff on the market. And again, these little ones, this is actually pretty big. I have some smaller ones that are probably about this high that are, that are staged everywhere. I mean, they're in the bathroom by the toilet. There's one in every single room, kids rooms everywhere, right? My back bed, my back, uh, mama bear cave, just everywhere. The den, the office, all these spaces have smaller size lanterns that are just grab and go and they're staged. They have their, their charged or have their batteries and they're ready to go. And so that that's just so the convenience of the power goes out. Um, you're on the toilet, let's say for example, and you don't have to be nervous, scared, whatever. There's a, there's a, um, there's a, um, lantern there right power goes out need to start finding stuff or go into the the box or whatever the case may be they're everywhere so you're not stumbling tripping over stuff in the dark trying to get stuff done they're everywhere and it keeps especially kids and kids understanding them the importance of emergency it's a good it's a good place to start as far as little kids and emergency preparedness and showing them this is where this stuff is staged at this is why it's here you're going to use this if this happens if mommy's not in the room and something happens Happens, you use this it's a really good way to get small children into emergency preparedness is with just small staging of different things like this in this case it's lighting the other lighting I have is obviously you can go up to bigger right some some um, fuel type lighting right oil lanterns kerosene lanterns different types of lanterns that take an oil um, that have a wick right and so the important thing is you know what kind do you like we um are a big fan of the deets right this one is actually brand spanking new but deets um and you need to make sure you have extra wick right you have to stockpile the oil um but i'm also again a big fan of staging we don't have ours hung here we had some actually hung in our apartment before here we haven't done that i mean hopefully we're moving here um in the months to come but uh they are still staged in the rooms right they're in the rooms that they're meant to be and they're part of decor so people come over and it doesn't you know it doesn't look like some kind of prepping you know stockpile it just looks like part of my decor part of what is supposed to be there but they're in the in the rooms they're supposed to be and they're ready um and then we go from there right and so i'm a huge fan of that i'm also a huge fan of other types of lighting low level lighting um for example right up here behind me part of this wall you can see we have a we have a section of this room that gets really really dark and even with lamps and stuff the the corner and the area just is real real there's a lip and so it just stays real dark um because of this lip right it blocks light and so we have a strip lighting there and so i'm a big fan of led lighting again have to have a way to power it but it's a low level lighting um string lighting like string patio lighting that you'd put outside on a patio um that's low level christmas lights low level so that stuff's really nice to have you can easily tack it up up around a room and if you have even a basic solar generator to run that that's um, a nice so say you have a smaller size generator let's say it's for the CPAP obviously the CPAP is not going to take all the power for that night so you can use some of that power to um, light up the room in the evening time so you guys can play some board games play some cards read some books whatever right um, and enjoy each other's company in the evening time until it's time to turn those off and then do the, do the CPAP um, and this, this stuff is stuff you've got to practice. So, you know, your timelines, you know, what, how much power something's going to draw from something because you might get something that you absolutely love and then it draws too much power. My, you know, you might have a solar generator, um, that your lamp, your regular table lamp will plug into, but that might be drawing too much power and therefore using the, the power in your power bank way longer than is needed, right? 
when you could have made it that last a little bit longer. So things to think about, you need to plug this stuff in, see how much stuff takes battery, how much stuff is USB, um, the bigger items, how long does it take, how much, because your solar generators too might be used and allocated for other things. Like I mentioned a CPAP, or they might be allocated for the freezer or the refrigerator or something else, right? And so you've got to know what your scenario is. Do you have the power? Um, and how can you um, utilize? But I'm a big fan of, of lights. Christmas lights even is fine, okay? One thing I wanna talk about too is um, light discipline. We have this thing in the military with red lens where at nighttime, as soon as nighttime comes, there is no white light in camp. It's all red lens. So flashlights, red lens. Any kind of lanterns, any kind of bulbs and lights inside tents and inside buildings um, is all red. So if a door gets open, a window, whatever, somebody's walking out, somebody's out patrolling but needs to see something, somebody's going to the, to the bathroom, whatever it is, it's done with a red light. And this is for light discipline in regards to your security. You know, off in the distance, if somebody is looking at your homestead, looking at your home, trying to figure out if somebody's there, how many people are there, um, if somebody's even there in general, there, that white light you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles, okay? Red light you cannot see like that for miles and miles and miles. And it, it really plays a trick on the eyes as far as nighttime and this red light, okay? And so at nighttime, to me, especially if your threat level is high and either you are low level, do not want anybody to know you're there, or just in general, your threat level, you want to just downplay having bright lights at night, then you're going to ensure that you have some red lenses, using red lenses if you're going outside, if you're going outside to investigate something, if you're having just string lights inside, obviously it's harder to play games, read books, things like that. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a way that you can have a low level light, but you can still see at least in the room with what's going on, okay? So just something to think about and have those as options. You need to think that if you have candles and things like that, okay, you have to be careful. People burn down their houses every single day because people are not used to candles. I'm a candle person. A lot of people are not, but you've got to be making sure that you know candle safety, your family knows candle safety, kids, you know, that American Blackout movie that I told everybody that they had to watch, you know, the kid almost burned down the house because the mom, I don't know what was in the kid's room, but you could clearly see the mom had like 12 candles right next to her living room curtains window by the window and so it was just ridiculous you could only imagine the kids room was the same with all these candles one you need don't need a thousand candles lit and two you need to make sure that you have something under them or they are in a jar already but that they are safe they are stable that they can't they're not close to anything that is flammable or can be easily tipped over and you need to have the things to be able to easily light them the matches the lighters you need to have the batteries or the battery banks possibly for charging USB stuff. You have to have all the extra things um, if, to be able to prepare to use these various things in your lighting sources, okay? There's other stuff on the market. Big thing that we love here is glow sticks as well. Those are nice if we're just trying to light a path maybe. Um, we don't. We found out that we don't use them as often now because of solar lighting, right? The magic of solar lighting outside, having it illuminate an area, you don't need that much to just kind of illuminate the area a little bit. It's not a super bright, bright light, um, but it's enough that you can kind of see. So you can illuminate the path if you have to go. There's no power, but you have to go to work and you're going back and forth to your car or you have to go do things. Like you still got to take out the trash. You got to take out whatever, right? You're still doing chores and doing things you got to take care of the animals whatever and you have to be able to see well glow stick is very easy you, you pop it and you can use it but they don't last forever right they have a they have a shelf life right they have a, a an amount of time that they're able to be used and then they start to dim and then they don't work anymore um but i like them a lot they're also good if you're doing any kind of patrol trying to see each other and have it clipped on you and you can see each other see your movement but you're wanting to have super super low visibility that's a good thing to have but again you can see that stuff the enemy can see that stuff okay um uh, let's see. And then outside lighting in general, you know, you think grid down, you think lighting, um, solar lights, not just solar lights, like yeah, garden path type lights, but 
but maybe bigger size solar lighting and they have the type that stay on all the time they have the type that go off and come on it's just motion sensor when something comes around those are really good i'm a big fan of those but i think that it's very very important like i always worry about grid down and any kind of amount of time and somebody trying to come hop fences and that that would be something that people will want to try to take down and take um but they got you know obviously to get it to work they've got to take it down the right way that takes time and so um I'm just hoping that we can can you know you can maintain keeping those because having the ability to have a light come on flash in an area alert that maybe something is there is important right um keeping that lit especially in a dangerous time right where people are trying to do bad things to people okay um let's see is there anything else light wise so you know when it comes to lights there's a lot of stuff on the on the market a ton of stuff on the market and so um it's just an area that I think is important that you take a minute to see what you have in your preps, see what you have for emergency preparedness, see what you have for everyday lifestyle. Like basically think of this too is if grid down happened and it never came back, what's the long-term game here? Well, for us, it's our oil lanterns. Those would be our long-term lighting here. That's why you have we have several of those because you have to have those um you know, virtually you don't have to have them in every room, but you have to have several so that you can do things and have a normal life in your house um, where you could light them and that would become your, your everyday light, right? That would become the thing. We'd go back to the olden times, but we'd have the, uh, um, we'd have the ability and fortunate, um, you know, be fortunate enough that we have several of those, that we have time right now to prepare and have several of those and not just be, you know, like our ancestors back in the day with just one lantern and their fireplace and that's all they had, okay? So take advantage of of the know-how now, the ability to get stuff, the ability to buy stuff, all the stuff on the market that you can get, the versatility of stuff, the versatility of, uh, I said versatility, the versatility of the items, but also the versatility of the pricing. Um, just really look around because there's a lot of stuff on the market and you just need the basics. You need some flashlights, you need some lanterns, you need some different lanterns with different capabilities of charging. And you absolutely need lanterns for one day that are oil, okay? That ha that burn on a on a fuel, okay? Um, I mean, there's all types of there's candle lanterns. There's, I mean, you you mentioned it. There's there's a ton of different stuff out there on the market, but you've got to get lighting. Get you some string lighting. And if you don't have string lighting, what's the plan? Do you plan on taking out the Christmas lights? Do you have red lighting? Do you have red lens? I mean, think simple. I mean, this is red bulbs. You could just replace bulbs. Maybe you're able to power your house and you're just replacing your bulbs with red light, with red bulbs. Um, you know, maybe you have a Generac, you know, maybe something like that. And it's just thinking about the small things like red bulbs. The red bulbs and the string lights, you know, something as simple as the stuff that you get for, for your chickens and your chicks and your animals and stuff. Red bulbs you can find anywhere. And there's all types of stuff in the market where you can get just one red bulb on a string that you would plug in. Um, again, as you get these products, make sure you're opening everything, you're trying everything, you're staging it, you're plugging it in, you're seeing exactly how much power it's going to take, what does it take to power this item, um, and if it's a power item, like you have to plug it in, right, to a solar generator or something, how much power is that drawing from that power source so that you know that from jump, oh, maybe I need to get a better, a better um, option that's not drawing as much power, okay? or just making sure that you have a product that actually can even be powered by the the, the um, solar generator that you even have, okay? Because you might get something that's too much too much watts and it won't even charge it, okay? It won't even work, all right? So um, I know this wasn't, you know, some kind of glamorous over the top video, but it's an important area to think about for preparedness. It's important to think about what you would do for short-term stuff, for long-term stuff, um, how this would change your life and just, take advantage of what we have now which is the internet which is the ability to shop and buy and get things easily now um before the shortages before there's a class before you can't get stuff before the dollar crashes before whatever right and you will have those regrets that you didn't go and get stuff and now you'll have to be creative and you'll have to figure out how to live life without some things which is fine that's what you'll do but why do that when you can prepare now and get your family ready now okay so 
some of you guys that are new and don't know um these head wraps you know i used to wear this is all i used to wear when i first had the channel if you've watched anything gone back you know over a year ago two years ago baby this is all your girl came on camera with so i've had a few comments like what is that on your head and what is going on and what's wrong with you and i've had a couple comments and baby this is how i wake up i obviously don't have my my locks right now right i don't have any braids or locks or anything like that right now it's my regular hair under here and but this is how i wake up i wear this to bed and i do these videos first thing in the morning and this is how you get me if i don't have my locks i don't have a ton of hair um i usually don't come on camera with with the lock wrap because my locks are like ready to go right there every day and i can just whip that baby off and be presentable for you guys and that's not the case with my regular hair okay um I'm, and i'm and i'm not um obviously i'm not the one to do my hair and makeup for you guys and get all dolled up so um it is what it is that's what it is this is my head wraps that i sleep in and that's what it is baby so probably gonna get my hair done hopefully this next weekend i don't know been pretty lazy about it was supposed to get it done last weekend and just wasn't feeling it so you guys be well i'll see you guys on the next video be kind do everything in love and i'll see you tomorrow take care